How's it going YouTube? Come with you today with another video and today guys with the brand new is my Where to Hand Trap Dictionary Edition V2. Today I'm going to be including a lot of different hand traps that I usually don't add into my videos, especially cards like Gamma, Reaper, D-Shifter, Droll, and Nibiru. There's a lot of really intricate times at which you can use these cards and we're going to talk about which matchups they're better for. So I hope that you enjoy this video today and if you haven't already checked out my sponsors over on Imperium Duelist, Dragon Shield, or Gem, definitely go down in the description below, check them all out. Without further ado, let's hop right on into the video. So for the first thing that I want to talk about today, it's going to be Ghost Reaper, the applications that this card has in the format and the different targets that you could run. Ghost Reaper is one of the most underrated cards that we have available to us in the game. This card is very good, but you do have to dedicate extra extra deck slots to this card just to be able to utilize it, which is always going to be a lot harder to do, especially in those combo decks that have a really tight extra deck and you can't really make many flex spots. So this is a card right now that's very strong because the best two decks in the game well, they're tier and sprite, and we already see a lot of similarities in the extra deck, being that we have Elf now and then Sprint soon. It just makes Reaper that much better. And then in a lot of the sprite lists, we're already seeing the main deck and the extra deck of Kit Kalos as well, because Reaper on Kit is so crazy. With the fact that Kit allows you to add or send and then get a free summon and a mill five, this card just definitely does way too much. Also, Elf being a body on your turn, being a body on your opponent's turn, there's quite a bit that this allows as well. So definitely the best two targets in the extra deck to utilize are going to be Elf and Kit for Reaper. But there's a couple other ones that I just want to mention here. One being Ignister Prominence. This card is very strong in the Draco Slayer deck because of the fact that you can spam out multiple copies of this and then use World Sea Dragon, the brand new Link 4, to go ahead and banish them and then resummon them, which will then allow you to utilize the Ignister's effects again. So that's pretty crazy. And this is something where you might want to go ahead and consider hitting the Ignister Prominence over like a Beyond if the Pendulum deck becomes a lot more popular. Same thing with Dragon Link. If that deck becomes more popular, just go ahead and hit their Heretic Seal because you don't want them to be able to get the bounce, then also the end phase Skarm effect off the Magnemont, which is even better because that card's insane. So this is something that you really just want to think about whenever you're looking at the different decks that could be relevant in the format. Also talking more so about the Exo Sister, the Elise, and then also the Jasmine. Both of these cards are pretty good to hit, and the archetypes are still very niche in the format, but they're still something that you could play against. So the Elise being that free banish, that free search, and then also the Jasmine being that free summon. Also turning off the potential for the Therian engine. Both of these cards are probably something that you wouldn't tend to run unless you're playing like Fluanderies and you don't care about like anything in your extra deck. If you're playing a more combo centric deck, you're probably just playing Elf and Kit Kalos. But if you do have the extra room, having Elise, Jasmine, Ignister, these are cards that I would definitely consider. Also, Lila. Lila is very good when you're looking at the Live Twin Sprite variant because of the fact that your end board can't get super polyed because you have Elf, Toad, and then Kiss a Kill. So, this is really strong because you get the pop. You can go ahead and try to Scythe Lock. You have Smashers. Typically, the Sprite variants now play a lot of hand traps. So, you have to play through like an Ash and Imperm as well. So, there's just a lot going on with that deck. And I think that getting rid of one of the cards that does allow for the Scythe Lock and what have you, I think is really strong too. Again, just to another option but just another very strong card to utilize in that strategy but moving forward talking about another card that a lot of people have a lot of questions about this format because of cards like gigantic cards like lulu is nibiru a lot of people have been asking me like hey you know is this card still worth running i think that it's still gonna be a three of in the sideboard even I'm very hesitant to put it in my main deck, and I know there's going to be a lot of different builds out there that still play it in the main deck because a lot of the different decks are still out there. But in my opinion, signing it is still going to be worth it. It's still a shutout versus most matchups. So if you look at like Ninja, right, like that deck just spams the board and doesn't put out a negation. You have things like Math Mech, Marincess, Blackwing, Scareclaw, even Crystal Beast. Exo Sister, Salamangrate, Pendulum, Sword Soul, especially a lot of the lines that go for like Sovereign first. So Nibiru still has a ton of application, and especially when Lulu and the Gigantic are in the format, I feel like a lot of people are just going to not be respecting Nibiru whatsoever. So using Nibiru could even just be better now. And there's enough decks out there that I feel like is at least warranted to side it because this card is still very strong in its own respect. But moving forward into another card that I get a lot of questions about as well, that's gonna be Droll and Lockbird. I get a lot of people asking me, you know, like, hey, is this card gonna be relevant in this format? When it's good, it's 
very good. When it's not good, it's very bad. And so this is something that I think in this format alone does have a lot of application. If you do play against a lot of the danger variant decks, I think shutting off the draw and then the searches through the Nessie, the Perlarino, what have you, so many searches that happen in the deck, that drill can be very useful, especially the fact that this card just denies so many draws and it just makes the dangers feel very bad to use. So also the drill will come up a lot against like Runic Sprite because of all the searches that happen there between blue, tip, jet what have you um even against like pendulum crystal beast which is one of those decks that it might not be too relevant but you'll still see it now there are a lot of people that are playing this deck i think that's pretty interesting too the deck itself is pretty cool so i'm interested to see how far it goes in the format but uh every single card in that deck for the most part says search so droll is very strong against that uh black wing is going to be relevant now with the whirlwinds that it has in the deck and all the different search cards of course droll is going to put in a lot of work and then even the new ninja archetype they're going to be using that world seed dragon as well to go ahead and reset their hanzos and then even cards like saryuya so this is something also that you just want to go ahead and shut off as soon as possible the deck does make isolde so off the first effect to search you can just droll right away and then a lot of the shenanigans get shut down pretty fast so even against drytron which is going to be very relevant summoning things like the vanities ruler Droll Knockbird is going to be very impactful against that deck. So if you are worried about playing against things like Drytron at your next event, then you should have Droll somewhere in your sideboard at the very least. Moving into our first deck here though of the video, talking more so about Branded and the new strategy that this deck has. We have Branded Fusion for the Lubellion, which is very strong. You summon the Albion and then you use the Lubellion to then tribute the Albion to go ahead and summon the Lubellion, get the Branded Beast or the Rebranded, both very good cards. So I would definitely recommend just going ahead and ashing the Brand Diffusion as always. That doesn't change. It's still the one ash target that you really want to go after. Uh, crowing the Lubellion. It's not an effect to summon itself. It just tributes and summons. So make sure that you are crowing in the open game stage. And not waiting for it to be like an effect because it's not. So definitely make sure that you go ahead and just crow the Lubellion. So as far as like Imperm Valor go... You want to make sure that you are imperming the Alubra at all means necessary. But if they do branded opening and you have Valor in hand, just go ahead and hit the Lubellion. Still very good. Besides that, we do see the Bestial cards. These are going to be very relevant in this format. These are really strong. So this is something where if you see a branded and red go target something or the Albion in the graveyard, make sure that you are using the Bestials or things like DD Crow to go ahead and deal with those situations. I really do like these cards a lot. The Bistials make Dark in the extra deck almost mandatory because if your opponent has a Magnema in the graveyard, you can then go ahead and Dark resummon the Magnema and then search a Dried Worm in the end phase, which is crazy for card advantage, especially if you're on like Branded and High Spirits, because then you add back Branded High Spirits and you add the Dried Worm to hand. So you're just going plus in card advantage so quickly. And then having a DD Crow like every single turn off these searches is also just equally insane. So definitely run the Bistial cards if you can can those cards are very very good uh, but looking more so at another strategy that this deck is trying to accomplish that's going to be branded expulsion this card allows you to tribute a fusion summon two monsters to your board or summon a monster to your board and a monster to your opponent's board if you're summoning to your opponent's board it's gonna be Ra's disciple if you're summoning to your own board it's gonna be scythe so definitely make sure that you are on top of using your bestials to get rid of the Ra's disciple or the scythe or a crow for these as well both very strong options again the bestials being able to deal with the scythe lock a lot better this format we still have to worry about like the sanctum scythe which is unfortunate but having these as answers to other problematic cards still not having a problem with that i think that the bestials are definitely going to be something that you're really going to have to think about every single match that you play because even if you're not getting anything in your graveyard banished they can still go ahead and summon the magna mutt add one in the end phase by banishing something out of their own graveyard which can then go ahead and trigger even like a tragedy so these are cards that are going to be very strong even within the branded bestial strategy uh, moving away from branded though i want to talk a bit about sprite 
Um, Ash is one of those cards that does quite a bit in the matchup, especially when you look at cards like Water Enchantress, which is in a lot of these different builds. If they are playing Brave Sprite, you want to make sure that you are Ashing Enchantress 100% of the time. That card just allows for a lot of free extension. One of the lines of play, you can summon out the token and then you summon Swap Frog to bounce back the Griffin Rider to your hand so you can play through Dark Ruler, which is another reason why no one plays Dark Ruler anymore because Tier literally just doesn't care about Dark Ruler. And then also Sprite can play around Dark Ruler. So just word to the wise, just don't play that card. It's very bad right now. Um, but if you are going to be ashing anything, again, Enchantress, you can wait for Sprint to dump the Angler, and then you can Ash Angler, which is fine. Uh, I typically like to go ahead and just Ash the Sprint in case something else gets sent that can get like Elfed back later on that I wouldn't want in the graveyard. So definitely going ahead and just Ashing Sprint is fine as well. Um, but beside that, if you're in a situation where you know that like red's going to hit the board or they need blue or jet to get back in the game, you can go ahead and just ash the starter to just guarantee that they don't have follow up. Uh, so that's another thing that Ash is really good for here. Uh, using the Valor Imperm Ogre on the Gigantic, always just correct. You want to shut off the line to the Swap Frog. Again, still having the ability to go Swap Frog, pitch the Angler, Swap Frog, pitch the Enchantress. Still very strong in the deck right now. Utilizing the Bell and the Crow against the Elf. Also the Bestial cards if they are targeting like a Jet or a Blue to go ahead and help you just shut down that matchup and then make sure that that Elf is not going to be as impactful. The Elf, again, just being such a strong card that's definitely going to be the Reaper target of the deck for sure. Uh, moving forward, though, into the Runic cards, make sure that you are using that Ghost Ogre on the Fountain, utilizing that Ash Blossom on the Runic Tip. You don't want them to be able to search whatever they want. This is something that will allow them to go ahead and search another card. Use that card to summon out a 2, and then Runic Fountain draw 2. So just you want to cut this off as soon as possible. And it's another thing to just be like, better have the second Runic card, you know? Uh, so that's really cool. I'm um, talking more so about the tier limit strategy though. There's so much to say about this. One thing that I don't have in the slides either is talking more so about like the theory and tier deck. Uh, theory and tier is interesting. They use the Reaper because it's an Aqua and then you can go ahead and use the Predaplant Scorpio as well for like the Lily. It's a very big deck as far as like engines go. So you play like the Preda Plant engine, you play Dangers, you have Tier in there, you have Therian. I don't think that it's super optimal. It's pretty cool, but I don't think that's a deck that I would necessarily be worried about. Um, also, again, Reaper on kit close, just super crazy. Valor Imperm on the kit is going to be one of the most important options that you have for yourself. Um, the kit, again, just allows for so much free extension. The card that a lot of people are probably turning their heads to and being like, hey, like, why would we play that card? Uh, Phantasbe is actually really interesting because if you're playing against tier, the biggest problems that you're going to have playing against tier is going to be Pearl Arena, Soliac, the Kaleido target. Phantasma deals with all of that, which is really nice. And so also, if you're playing against tier, the typical end board is going to be Elf Mask Arena. So this will allow you to go ahead and dig for three cards. You put back two. So if you open up like any bricks and whatever your strategy is, still really strong to go ahead and just like sculpt your hand a little bit more. Plus you have that body on the board automatically. So you can just go battle phase and like threaten the Mask Arena and just try to get the board broken as soon as possible. So for me, I really like Phantasmia a lot. I think the card's really cool. Uh, we really have to see how the tier limit deck shapes up after the new uh, format happened. But at the same time, I feel like this is still going to be a pretty cool tech option at the very least. Uh, but moving forward into more about Tier Limit, um, using the Bistial cards and Crow against the Kaleido Heart or any name in the graveyard, still very strong. Typically, I won't Crow the first name. I usually will just let them make like the kit close and then we'll go after like the second or the third name. Because like if you Crow the first one and they just use another one and get to the kit, I feel like it objectively just doesn't do what you want it to at that point um, because like they're still going to make kit and they still get one more fusion. So usually that fusion is just going to be like Lulu or Kaleido. Uh, and then even if you have cards like Nibiru, they can go ahead and just send Scream and add Soliac so they still have like Kaleido Soliac. So these are things that I would just think about. Um, typically, we'll just go after like the second or the third name, though. I think those are usually just the better hit. And usually it has to be the second name because the kit's going to be the first fusion summon and the second summon's going to be Lulu. It depends if they're going for like Garura lines or not. 
But so for that second fusion, if it is Lulu, then your bestial cards just don't matter. So make sure that by that second fusion, you are just going ahead and dropping the uh, DD Crow on them. Uh, D Shifter, this is something that I get asked a lot. If you should just drop D Shifter against Tier Limit in the draw phase, or if you should wait. Cards like Shiren do reveal in hand. So this is something where I would definitely just wait on D Shifter. So if they go like Normal Sun Rhino, or they use like Shiren effect in hand, or if they like Normal Sun Merly, like these are all effects that you can just chain D Shifter to, and you get a lot more value for your D Shifter rather than just like dropping it immediately. Uh, so this is something that I definitely would just like wait a little longer with. Also, you have to hold Gamma for Dweller. I would put like Valor or Imperm on this, but usually the Dweller is just sitting under the Elf, so it just never mattered. You quite literally just need Gamma or like Droplet, but Gamma is still very strong. Being able to just remove the Dweller is really nice too, because if it did survive another turn, being able to utilize the effect again, um, and then plus utilizing the Gamma, being able to go directly into that Elf is really nice too. Uh, so this is something else to think about. And then if you are playing against the tier limit variant that is going for like the Griffin Eradicator, if your strategy does lose to Eradicator, you do have to hold Crow, Valor, Imperm, Crow for the Eradicator, the Valor or Imperm for the Griffin, because again, they're going to go ahead and discard a card for cost. So they're going to go Neg 1, which is really important here to go ahead and get as much advantage out of your hand traps as possible. Um, and then just holding that crow for that eradicator so they don't just like lose to that card because that card's broken. Um, typically, if they don't have another way to summon out a monster that can be utilized for the eradicator, they'll just use the gigantic over their elf, which makes it 32, which is big enough for the eradicator. And then last but not least, if you are playing against tier limit and you have Ash, a lot of times it's just better off to use Ash on your own turn when they reveal Havnus. So you can set up cards like Dweller and you don't have to worry about them playing on your turn. Uh, still just going to be one of the most important interactions that you have in the deck. The next deck that I have for you here is going to be Labyrinth. Labyrinth is a deck that a lot of people have been talking about, and I really want to make sure that you know how to shut this deck down. So talking more so about how important the Welcome Labyrinth Ash is, the fact that you can summon out the Labyrinth of the Silver Castle is pretty nuts, especially if you have the field spell up, because not only do you summon the Silver Castle, but you also get an effect pop at the same time, which is pretty crazy. So you want to just go ahead and ash the Welcome Labyrinth. The Silver Castle also just says that you can't respond with monster effects to the normal traps, which is pretty crazy, honestly, because of the fact that like most of the boards right now are monster heavy. So if this resolves, it's going to be a bad time. Uh, so this is something that you definitely want to go ahead and ash. And then you can use Gamma, Valor, Imperm on the normal summons. You just really want to shut off the recursion. And the fact that these cards can just net you a lot more, you just want to utilize your Gamma, especially if you have that, and then Valor or Imperm. So moving away from that and going more toward like Crystal Beast, I have Joel Mock here. Uh, I just want to talk about this one on the side because of the fact that most cards in Crystal Beast do say search on it. So this is something that you do want to make sure that you have in your strategy if you are playing against a lot of Rogue at the event. Even some of the meta decks having like a lot of the dangers around, Droll is just very strong. Uh, but you definitely want to go ahead and Valor or Imperm the Sapphire Pegasus so they can get to the Rainbow Dragon. The Rainbow Dragon can go ahead and banish itself from the Spell and Trap Zone to then go ahead and summon out a Crystal Beast from the deck. And then you can Ash the Trap in the Grave, or you can just go ahead and Ash the Crystal Bond. The Rainbow Bridge is another solid option as well, but either or, both of these cards are still very strong Ash targets at the moment. I would recommend either. Now for ninjas. So ninjas are actually really interesting. I watched a lot of the different full combos of the deck. Of course, Isolde is now in here because any two warriors is a uh, full combo. And so this is something where Nibiru and Droll, again, very strong cards. You want to go ahead and Imprim or Valor on the Isolde effect. But at the same time, there is still going to be the Getsuga that is the free double summon from the graveyard. So if you do have cards like Bell as well, still very solid options. But Valor and Imprim do work the same. Uh, very insane effect, honestly. Just go ahead and summon back two for no reason. Um, but what I've also seen is that if you Ash the Upstart Golden Ninja, this is another card that can just be a pass turn. You go ahead and get rid of a trap from your hand, gets Ash so they can't summon out the Hanzo and go into Isolde. This is a very important target to go ahead and just shut down immediately. So for the next one, we're going to be talking a lot more about the Draco Slayer deck. 
This one's pretty crazy. So there's a lot to break down here and I really wanna make sure that everyone understands what this deck does because this is something that you can definitely get caught off guard by 100% of the time. So if you Ash the Majesty Pegasus on the left here, that card allows the Draco Slayer strategy to go ahead and add cards like Sky Iris, Secret Village, Mystic Mine, whatever you really want, this card can just grab it, which is crazy because it just grabs any field spell because you know, Ancient Fairy Dragon, pretty broken. Uh, so this is something that I think is pretty crazy to be getting into the game because field spells are definitely one of the most broken things that we have in the game. So just going ahead and ashing this is going to be very important. You wanna be able to shut off the zones as soon as possible. So Gamma on the Beyond, denying the search, also just very important here. Um, utilizing the Valor Imperm on the Ignister, the Beyond, or the Majesty Pegasus, still very important too. I think using the Valor, the Imperm on things like the Majesty's Pegasus is definitely going to be the most important, followed by the Ignister. Ignister is still very good too to go ahead and hit, so it really depends on like what you're going for. But I definitely don't want my opponent to be able to add things like Sky Iris, very strong card for the strategy, and that's something you want to shut down as soon as possible. Uh, moving off of this, though, we have Blackwing, Droll, Nibiru, both very strong against this. Using the Bistial cards is actually pretty crazy. The Zephyros in the graveyard, being able to have the Bistials or DD Curl for either of these, again, going to be very strong. We have the Ghost Ogre for either the Whirlwinds, just being able to shut off all the searches that they're able to get because of all the new normal summons, especially. And then Imperm or Valor on the Wise Tricks has always really just been the move. This is usually also a pass turn. This card's very important to the strategy too. So you want to be able to shut this off as soon as possible. Those rank up spells really go kind of crazy and you don't want them to be able to have access to that. So talking a bit more about Marinsas, I know I just did a video on this, but I do want to make sure that everyone has a good idea and understanding about where to hand trap this deck. So having Gamma, Ash, Valor, Imperm on Sea Angel is definitely going to be the most important. But having Crow and Bell is also very strong against the Dive, the Slug, the Mage, the Anemone. You can also Ghost Ogre Anemone, which is really strong too. You just net them another card though. Uh, but it's still really good because of the fact that it has to summon to the zone that it points to. So that's another option for you. Um, but of course, you can't use the Bistules here. So Crow and Bell got to work. Um, but definitely getting rid of the Sea Angel as soon as possible is going to be your best option. I left out some decks this time around because I feel like I don't really want to repeat those since a lot of them didn't really have anything changed. So I just wanted to make sure that I touched on the decks that are going to be the most relevant to the format. Talking a little bit more about Rika and Avalon. Again, this is the deck that really can come out of nowhere and do really well. The... Con Con is one of the craziest field spells, like we were talking about earlier, just field spells in general being so nuts. Um, and I feel like Con Con just added so much to the deck. So this is something that I definitely feel like will end up popping up here and there. Uh, Droll, Nibiru, both very strong cards here. DD Crow on the pedal to stop the recursion. Again, super strong. Ash on Sewing, not on Dryas, because if they open Sewing, then you just wasted a card. Uh, but you definitely just go ahead and Ash the Sewing 100% of the time. Um, very good target there to just not allow for any extension. Um, then Gamma, Valor, Imperm. The second that they tribute the monster with the Jasmine, it's just so crazy because especially if you have Gamma and they go Jasmine Tributed Monster and then you Gamma the Jasmine, it's going to be a pass turn. It's actually just wild. Um, Gamma is by far my favorite hand trap. It's so good being able to just remove something from the board, especially against things like Sprite. Uh, but using Gamma here, very good. Valor, Imperm, and Jasmine, both very strong options. Now for Dragon Link. This is something that I did want to point out. Using the Bistial cards on the Bistial cards. So this is actually kind of funny, and this will come up a little bit, is the fact that if your opponent uses a Bistial card and they're targeting a monster in your graveyard, you can then chain your own Bistial and then banish the monster out of your graveyard. Why would you want to do this? Because if you're playing against Dragon Link, you don't want them to summon Magnemut because at that point, they're getting a free Skarm in the end phase. And that sounds very bad for you. So that's something that you can go ahead and summon out your Magnemut then, and you can add a Dried Worm in your end phase and be up in card advantage versus your opponent being up in card advantage. This is also going to be very similar to the Branded theory where you would just crow the Lubellion. Being able to Dragon Ravine send Lubellion 
kind of insane. And then also being able to go like a safer effect, add back Lubellion, pitch Lubellion, search a Bisted monster, and then you can summon that Bisted monster, and then you can resummon the Lubellion, get the rebranded or the branded beast. It's a whole combo. This card is really crazy. You want to get rid of it as soon as possible. So the other thing about Dragon is that it's gone back to summoning the safer pitching things like abs and then adding the Nocto vision. So you wanna make sure that you are just going ahead and Gamma, Imperm, Valor on the safer. The card's very broken for what it allows. The card's very strong and this is something that you definitely wanna shut down as soon as possible. Uh, again, being the number one normal summon of the deck is just a card that you really wanna be able to remove. And then again, Droll and Nibiru, both very strong against this deck. Of course, if they go into like the seals, it's going to be less good. But at the same point, there are a lot of end boards that require a lot of different summons throughout the combo for like rebranded and the branded beast. So there are a lot of opportunities for Nibiru to be used, especially if your deck just can't play through like the bounce anyway. You can still just utilize the Nibiru. They'll summon out like the Magnum, get a search. But at that point, as long as you can play through like a Bestial Banish from your graveyard, then you'll be completely fine. Uh, moving away from Dragon Link and into Tritron, Droll is just the game ender. That card is literally the best thing against this deck. It's super nuts. Uh, you have to hold Imperm for your turn because of Vanity's really being so accessible in this deck. You have to be able to have Imperm for that. Make sure you have that. Uh, Valor on Mubeta, still very good, but I'm still holding that Imperm for my turn for sure. Uh, you still will see a lot of different boards though. They'll end like the Vanity's Ruler and the Herald of Perfection now. That's why we have Ash in the pre-prep. So just make sure that you do have the Ash for that. Um, using DD Crow and the Bestial cards on Ben 10 and any of the Drytron names, super crazy by the way. Um, very, very good interaction here. Uh, but you definitely want to hold that imprint for that ruler. Make sure you don't forget that. And then use any of your Bestials or DD Crows on any of the Drytron monsters or Ben 10. And you'll have a great time. Now into Medulce. So Medulce is actually a deck that I think is going to be doing very well this format. Now the reason being is this Exceed right here that you definitely want to go ahead and imperm. This is a card that's really crazy. And the second that a Modoshe goes to the graveyard, you can go ahead and just like shuffle back two cards away. If your opponent goes like Rhino Heart Effect, and then you chain the XE to go ahead and detach. And then on a new chain, your opponent goes like have this effect in the graveyard. And then you just go this effect and then shuffle it back. Um, I think that's really cool, especially with cards like Promenade. Um, this deck has a lot of potential this format. I think that's a really cool tech option. It's kind of like playing Exosister, but it's just like Modelche can also play D-Shifter and has a lot of really cool utility cards. So I think this deck's pretty cool. Um, then you can also just go ahead and Gamma, Ash, or Valor with the Petting Sasaur, the Angeli, or the Hoot Cake. Any one of the three are all very solid options to go ahead and shut down. Again, I think this deck has a lot of potential. I know from what I've seen so far that the deck is relatively inexpensive at the moment. I know the Angelis are like three or four bucks, which is really crazy because they've always been like 20 or 30. So it's definitely gone down in price tremendously. So maybe it's something that you consider picking up. Just a really cool option for the format. Uh, Fluanderies, nothing really changed here. By the way, Advents are like $25. That's pretty insane. Uh, but you definitely want to go ahead here and Ash the Advent. It's almost never relevant to just like Ash, Robina, and Normal Summon because it's almost never going to be the case, especially if they have like Prosperity in the map. Uh, but Ash on the Advent is usually always just correct. Using Valor or Imperm on Eglin because you just got to put them on. You don't have Empen at that point. And then utilizing the Ghost Ogre on the Magnificent map is always going to be correct. Shutting down the map is going to be the number one aspect to just like winning the game because you want to have a normal summon in most decks. So getting rid of this is going to be your number one goal. So talking a bit more about Math Mech, Math Mech is a deck that we've seen very far out of the format now, especially because the Bestial cards are here. So utilizing Crow, the Bestial cards, or Bell, if your opponent flips Super Factorial, you can just go ahead and Crow or Bestial away the diameter. So all they really can do is summon the Ellen Bershon. And that card never really mattered if you were just winning that turn anyway. So I think that's pretty crazy. This is what makes me think that Math Mech has a very hard time competing now, especially with Bestials in the format. 
Uh, but also if you have Ash Failure Imperm, using that on the circular search or on the Alimbertion, whichever one comes first, because you want to make sure that you don't allow your opponent to be able to get into their super factorial, especially if you don't have a Bestial or a Crow. That card is very strong going into the Laplacian and then being able to go ahead and rip a card off of your hand and then off of your monster zone and your spell and trap card zone, then also being an Omni Negation very strong so again bestials versus this deck are pretty crazy um talking a bit more about scareclaw too this deck is pretty cool i think this is something that is also just flown under the radar you definitely want to have nabiru handy against this deck to go ahead and shut down things like the tryheart but you can always hold imperm for your turn to go ahead and shut down the scareclaw tryheart this card is a pseudo floodgate and it's very good so this is something that you definitely want to go ahead and just make sure that you have the negation for Having Ash or Valor for the Link 1 or the Scareclaw Heart, you definitely want to go ahead and shut both of these cards down. Both very strong searchers to the deck as well as having the Crow or the Bell for the arrival target. Um, this deck is really cool and it's been splashed into things like Tier already as well. So I could definitely see more of this deck being a engine in the future or even more of it on its own. Uh, but this is something that you definitely want to be aware of. And again, Nibiru being very strong against a strategy like this too. This is something that you definitely want to have in your sideboard at three, just in case you go to like a regional or a YCS and you start playing against a lot of different decks instead of like tier and sprite, the Nibiru will still come up and be very impactful. I do hope that you enjoyed this video today. There's a lot of information to talk about and a lot of different variants of different decks out there. So I'll always make updates in different videos as well as far as which decks are going to be in and out of the format. Uh, the next video that I do want to make is going to be an overall look at the format and what we're seeing as like the better decks, the worst decks, which one have potential and which ones just really kind of fell out. Uh, so I do hope that you're looking forward to that as well. If you haven't already joined my Discord, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all down in the description below, as well as my Metify page if you want a coaching session over there. Definitely feel free to PM me on Discord if you have any questions. I hope that you enjoyed this video today. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.